Welcome to part three, the final part of the 50 millimeter focal length for the SR Lounge Canon Lens War series. Now, since we had a total of seven lenses in this grouping, in the first part, we compared just the three 50 millimeter primes. In part two, we compared the four different zoom lenses that cover the 50 millimeter focal length. And in this video, we're gonna be comparing our favorite zoom from part two to our three primes from part one to come up with an overall conclusion. For those that are new to the SR Lounge Canon Lens Wars series, be sure to check out the teaser video where we introduce the entire series. We show you our testing methodology, what we're looking for, and so forth. Also, check out each video and article on each focal length. Now, this is the 50 millimeter focal length conclusion. We have a total of seven lenses that fit into this grouping. In the last two videos, we narrowed it down. In the first video, we talked about basically the 50 millimeter prime, the 1.2 as being our favorite in the 50 millimeter grouping, although we are gonna show all three primes in this video. We also showed in part two that our favorite zoom that goes across the 50 millimeter focal length is still the 2470 f2.8. So in this video, we're gonna do a comparison between our favorite zoom and our 50 millimeter primes. Let's go ahead and start from our top with their WOAs or their wide open apertures. Now, once again, this is a visual test of differences and not a technical one. So we're trying to distinguish differences that appear while viewing the images full screen on a 27 inch 3K resolution display. When simply viewing it full screen on a display, there was two images or two lenses that immediately stuck out with having improved sharpness and clarity over the others. And that was the 50 millimeter L with its WOA of 1.2 and the 2470 Mark II at its WOA of F2.8. Both these lenses, they were visually just simply more clear, more crisp when simply viewed full screen. We didn't have to zoom into them. In terms of sharpness at their wide open apertures, the sharpest lens from center to the edge of the frame was still the 2470 F2.8 Mark II. But we expect that will kind of change as we raise the 50mm uh, 1.2 up in aperture. Both of these lenses were sharp enough to make it difficult to tell differences in sharpness prior to zooming in. It was easy to tell from aesthetics, but in sharpness it was difficult without zooming in. Once we did zoom in, we particularly noticed, especially around the area of the face, the dress, you can really see how much more clear the 2470 is over the other lenses. The effect is even more exaggerated as you extend towards the right side of the frame, as you can see the edge sharpness on the 2470 is significantly better than that of the other primes. Now this is largely due to simply having a wider depth of field on the 2470 at f2.8 compared to the 50 millimeters 1.2 or the other lenses at 1.4 and 1.8. So when we bring both lenses, the 50 millimeter 1.2 and the 2470 up to their WCA, which is their widest common aperture of f2.8, we see the lenses more or less equalize. And perhaps even the 50 millimeter 1.2 L steps a little bit ahead of the 2470 in terms of center to edge sharpness. And you can see that in the same branch area that extends to the right of the frame. Now, in terms of sharpness at their wide open apertures, in third place, we have the 50 millimeter 1.8, and in fourth, we have the 50 millimeter 1.4, which we said is kind of too dreamy and hazy to be usable at 1.4. Let's go ahead and step them all up to their WCA of f2.8. And at f2.8, for the most part, each lens equalizes in terms of center area sharpness. And that means that visually, just viewing them full screen, it's tough to really tell the difference in terms of center area sharpness. But when we zoom in, we can see that now the center area sharpness for the 50 millimeter 1.8 is a bit lower than the other lenses. But at f2.8, when zoomed in, the sharpest lens is actually the 1.2, while the other three kind of sort of level off in terms of sharpness. But when it comes to edge sharpness, as shown towards the right side of the frame that we were comparing before, again, the 1.2 is still in the lead, the 2470 is next up while the 50mm 1.8 steps into third place and the 1.4 goes into fourth place yet again. All right, so enough about sharpness. What about the overall looks and the aesthetic quality of the bokeh? Now let's compare each lens again at its WOA or their wide open apertures. And at that aperture, it's pretty clear to see, even when just viewing them simply full screen, which lens is which. We can see that the 50 millimeter 1.2, it has by far the most bokeh and it also has the most aesthetically pleasing bokeh. Now in second place, as far as the amount of bokeh would be the 50 millimeter 1.4, but while this lens has the second most amount of bokeh, it is simply too soft and and too dreamy to be used at 1.4, at least for our standards. So we wouldn't shoot at that wide open aperture. In addition, the bokeh has kind of a fuzzy and busy look to it, which I don't find too appealing. It looks almost artificial in a certain sense. And this makes me again prefer the 50 mm 1.8 if I'm shooting at their wide open apertures. Now, while the 50 mm 1.8 has a bit less bokeh, it is more pleasing to the eye, not to mention it's a bit sharper and has less of that soft and dreamy look when wide open. The 2470 F2.8 Mark II, it did have the least amount of bokeh of all the lenses when wide open compared to the 50s, but it also had a nice amount of bokeh in the background, and what bokeh it did have was quite aesthetically pleasing as well. 
So again, let's bring them all up to their WCA or their widest common aperture of f2.8 and let's see how they look aesthetically. With all four lenses at f2.8, the aesthetic quality to the bokeh really starts to even out. In fact, it becomes kind of tough to tell the difference between each lens when simply viewed at full screen. With the 50 millimeter primes even set to f2, it's kind of difficult to visually see the difference in bokeh when compared to the 2470 at f2.8. For example, if we compare the 1.8 and the 1.4 at f2 to the 2470 at f2.8, it's tough to tell which one is which without zooming in and doing side-by-side -side comparisons. But when we do zoom in, we can still see that the 50mm 1.2 at f2.8 still has a smoother bokeh and visually it's still a little bit more pleasing. But again, when just viewing visually, they're tough to distinguish. When it comes to low light performance, the 50mm 1.2 is still the clear winner and it's going to give you potentially up to two and a half more stops of light than the 2470 at f2.8, which is absolutely huge. So clearly it's the winner when it comes to low light, but the 50mm 1.4 gives you two stops better than 2470, but the problem is that it's not really usable at 1.4. And this means that for me, I generally will shoot on the 20, uh, on the 50 millimeter at 2.0, which ends up only being a stop faster than the 2470. Still, it's a significant speed improvement, but it's only one stop compared to two and a half. Now at that setting of F2, it's gonna look virtually identical to the 50 millimeter 1.8. They're gonna be very, very similar. So again, I would save the money and go for the 1.8 over the 1.4. As far as contrast and color, the 50 millimeter 1.2 and the 2470 f2.8, well, they stand visually above the other two lenses as well. The 50 millimeter 1.2 does have a bit more vignetting than the 2470 when it's wide open, but that's kind of part of the overall visual appeal for the most part when you're shooting at 1.2 as well. All right, so we took our favorite zoom and compared it to all of our primes, and what's the final verdict in the 50 millimeter focal length? Well, the clear winner in this focal length for pure aesthetic quality, from the amount of the bokeh to the overall quality of the bokeh, the sharpness, the overall contrast, image quality, and so forth, is still gonna be the 50 millimeter 1.2L. But of course, this lens does cost just north of 1600 bucks, so is there something that's more in the value range? Well, again, I'd recommend that you skip over the 50 millimeter 1.4, and if you're looking for a great value, then simply go with the Nifty 50. This guy's only around 100 bucks, and for that price, it's going to give you great image quality. It's going to give you that nice 50 millimeter bokeh and that nice look without really breaking the bank at all. And it's by far the best value in the group when you compare the price to the overall image performance that you're getting. Now, when you do decide that it's worth the upgrade, save up so that you can skip over the 1.4 and just go straight to the 1.2L. The reason being is that there's just too little of an improvement from the 1.8 to the 1.4 to really justify it. Now, here's what I'd recommend that you all do. Start again with the 2470 f2.8 lens, really as just your first lens. This should be the first lens that you upgrade to, especially if you're gonna go own two or more lenses. So get this lens first, and what you're gonna notice is that it has a very similar aesthetic quality in terms of bokeh and the amount of bokeh that it creates to the 50 millimeter 1.4 and the 1.8 when these are used around f2. The 2470 also has a beautiful look to its bokeh. It has great sharpness, wonderful color, beautiful contrast, and so forth. In addition, you can also back up a little bit more. You can zoom into 70 millimeters, shoot wide open at f2.8, and you'll get even more background blur. You'll get even more bokeh, which again will mimic that prime look but you end up having a lens that's much more flexible because it goes from 24 all the way up to 70 millimeters. Now, once you already have the 2470, then I would recommend skipping over all the other 50 millimeter primes until you have enough saved up just to jump straight to the 50 millimeter 1.2. The 1.2L will give you, again, two and a half more stops of light, and it's gonna give you an aesthetic quality to the bokeh that is noticeably different from the 2470. In addition, it actually feels and functions far better than both of the cheaper 50 millimeter primes, which can really have a hard time focusing and so forth, getting tack sharp images out of them. Now, there is one reason you might wanna have one of these cheaper primes in addition to, say, the 2470, if you don't have enough for the 1.2. If you have the 2470 and you simply are in situations where you need that extra stop of light to shoot at f2, then it, you can still justify the cost. And again, I would go with the less expensive lens because it gives you most of the performance of the 1.4. And then once you have enough saved up, go to the 1.2. I hope you all enjoyed this conclusion to the 50 millimeter focal length in the SR Lounge Canon Lens Wars series. Now be sure to check out the actual article on srlounge.com by clicking in the description below for more example images, more information on each lens, as well as links on where you can purchase. My name is Pi and I'll see you all in the next video.